Furious Driving, presented by Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean, and care for your car with 10% off site wide using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And now, like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving, and today we're spending another day playing with Beryl the Beetle and making perhaps the biggest visual change to this car of all, because last episode yesterday, I think it would have been no day before yesterday, we took those horrendous hubcaps off and left it with steel wheels. And I was giving it some serious thoughts of just painting these wheels a nice black and getting some hubcaps, like centre caps or something, or doing something a bit retro with it. But there is something I do want to do even more, and that's put it back to how it should have been from the factory. So let's go and take a look in the back of Hippo and see what's hiding in there. Now, the other day I drove up to Coventry to have a picture of Hippo drawn by Ian from Pop Band Colour. And before that though, I did make a pit stop at a Beetle Breakers near Rugby. So, take off the uh, load space cover. I have acquired a set of these, a set of 16 inch Volkswagen Beetle Alloys, correct wheels for the car. They are a little bit scuffed, but not too bad. I can sort these out, no bother. And also they've got fairly decent tires on them. This one is a uh, Bridgestone. Um, this one is uh, a full run, which I'm sure is absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> actually that one does a tiny bit of cracking in it as well. Now they're not perfect. They do need a little bit of attention because there's a few scuffs on them in places, but certainly that's all repairable. So let's take them out and have a good look at them. It's always handy to have a hippo around and when you need to collect lots of wheels, it's not a problem. Okay, the wheels coming off barrel are, well, the basic 16 inch steels that come with the car as standard. Now, first of all, at the back, we've got some Goodyears, which are pretty good condition in terms of tread, but bad condition in terms of age, because they've got some cracking showing up on the MOT last year. So sadly, those do need to come off. At the front, we have your finest Chinesium, again, with fairly good tread, but the tracking was a couple of degrees out, so they're quite low on the inside edges. So they also needed changing constancy, not a brand I've ever heard of before. What we've got though are, well, a bit of a mixture of things actually. These are all the same style of wheel, but I'm guessing from different cars, because this is a Continental Contact 2 with half used tread. This one is a, a Zeet. I've never heard of a Zeet before, but that has got very good tread, looks barely used. This one is actually quite um, cracked actually and pretty old. This is a full run, which I don't think is anything to be proud of. And it's also quite heavily cracked, but I did have good tread. This final one is a Bridgestone. So we've got two quality tires, two never heard of tires. And this one actually does have good tread on it as well. And this one looks quite good. So perhaps I'll put the two good ones on the front for the moment. Some definite juggling to be done. And looking at the condition, we've actually almost inadvertently put this in order of best to worst. This one with the Conti on it is actually in really quite nice condition, needing virtually nothing. This one with the uh, Zeet is also good enough to not really worry about. These two with the Bridgestone and Full Run have seen some curb action. So these will want a little bit of attention, but I can sort this out with some filler and some uh, alloy wheel paint, make this thing look quite quite tidy actually. That's bits, uh, quite nasty scuffed actually. This is also quite nasty scuffed, but nothing that can't be fixed with a bit of filler and sandpaper. So this car can be, well, quite significantly transformed visually in just a few minutes. I do need, as you see, four new tires anyway. So now, with a bit of muddling around. If I buy two front tires and stick them on the front and the two best tires that are remaining here and stick them on the back, we can get away with just buying two new tires. These incidentally cost £125 off eBay and I obviously went to collect them so there's no postage costs. So there we go. Shall we pop them on the car and see what we think? Right, so we have got ourselves our little slash Aldi for whichever one alloy wheel. Oh, tight. Removaling nuts. Now, I've done a bit of research, or trying to do some research, to check whether the steel wheel wheel nuts are compatible with the alloy wheels. And I can't find out for the moment. They do look the same. But, if anyone knows otherwise, do let me know in the comments. Now, while I've got the wheel off, Let's have a quick looky look at what things look like underneath here. Now I know from the receipts it did have new discs and pads not that long ago and they still look very nice indeed. 
Our CV boot looks very nice as well, which is always refreshing to hear. Shock absorber looks decent. It's all got a bit of surface rust on it, but that's par for the course with this kind of thing. If I land a guard it or something in the near future, then that will be, well, an improvement. Oh, and our turbo hose, the mystery turbo hose, I've been told arrived because the postage delays took ages to arrive and then only turned up a couple of days before I swapped the car over. So that's why it didn't get done. It is just in there somewhere. That's where that turbo goes, which is fun to get to by the looks of it. Oh, these Volkswagen lock wheel nut arrangements are stupid because you put them on there and then you can't see where the holes go. even with a less than perfect alloy. That suddenly looks so much better. I just noticed this has got little VW dust caps as well. What a nice little touch. You can tell this car was really owned by someone who adored their Volkswagens. Right, so first off, this is the Goodyear, which looks so good from the side, but when you look into the tread, it's actually cracking apart to the full, well, radius of the tire, which is quite sad, really. Um, I wonder what the date is on it. Can anyone see the date? Uh, 16th week of 2024? Probably not that. I can never find the date on tyres. It's going to be about 10 years old though, isn't it? In the back, really nice discs, really good pads. Looks like recent springs, to be honest, as well. Decent looking shocks as well for everything on this thing. It does actually look really quite good. Yeah, kind of laughing here. I am very, very happy with the condition of this car. Looking at this makes me smile. Right, let's pop another alloy on. Let's put the two good ones on the driver's side so we can take a nice photo of it at least. What do you think? That looks just so much better like that. Even with the slight scuffy scabbiness, that's still a massive improvement over either the basic steel wheels or the, well, certainly better than the hubcaps. This is really, really a huge improvement on the car. I will get some filler and I'll get some paint, make this thing look a lot better, and we'll continue to improve this. And I guess we have to put some new tires on at least two of these wheels as well, because putting mismatched tires just sets my teeth on edge. It's something I absolutely can't stand, but, it does mean we've got better wheels, and three of the tyres at least are far better than the ones that are coming off. So it's kind of a win just there. And that is such a massive improvement on the overall look of Beryl the Beetle. Significantly improving. We've gone from those hub caps, which I'm not a fan of in any way, shape, or form. I don't mind the hub caps on these, they look quite good on the, the base model hub caps, but these are a world up. And looking on eBay, even the correct hubcaps for these are, are between 40 and 80 pounds each. There must be quite a demand for them because, yeah, they're not cheap at all. So 125 pounds for four wheels, two good tyres, two and a half good tyres. Yeah, so really, really have transformed this car. What I'm going to do, I'll check out the pricing on tyres. And what I might do is put two new ones on the front and then put the Continental and the Bridgestone on the back, where it's kind of less important. Try and keep the costs down, but keep it as safe and legal as possible. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, the, only, the worst wheel of all is this one on the back where it's a full run, which is the worst brand. It's also the oldest with the most visible cracking on it. And the uh, alloy is the worst scraped. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll be honest, refurbishing wheels is not a lot of fun. It's something I can do and have done many times before. It's not a great day out, but you know, it does make a big difference. So I'll fit that in amongst other jobs because that is, going to make a huge difference to this car. Meanwhile, I'm going to go cost up some new tyres for it. And also, thanks to my friendly local Volkswagen main dealer, I now have the correct paint code for this. So I can pop down to Kent Paints. Well, I'll go there right now in Beryl and we'll go and get some paint mixed up for it. Okie dokie, I've been down to Kent Paints and they will mix up an aerosol for you while you wait. And now I've got a can of Volkswagen LG5V Royal Navy. Lovely shade of blue, this car is quite an interesting dark metallic blue. It's uh, got a slight twist in it. I quite like it actually. I think once it's all been polished up, it's gonna look really nice. I've also been down and got, I don't know what you call these things, paint and dust removal discs. I call them lava wheels because they look like lava, like some spewed up a volcano. And I did discover recently you can actually buy refills for these online. So once I've used this one up, I'm gonna go and order a bunch more, which is a a new and exciting development because otherwise you have to pay like eight pounds every single time it gets quite expensive we can pay about 20 quid and get a stack of these little oh, brillo pad things right so let's pop this in a drill and sort out this door well i say sort out the uh, problem is 
yesterday was really nice and warm when I started doing this job. Today it suddenly dropped down to below six degrees. And I don't know what you know about doing car paint, but it needs to be quite warm for the finish to look good. So we'll get as far as priming it, rust proofing it, and maybe even filling it. But uh, I'm not gonna put the blue on today because, well, it's too chilly. You won't get a good finish. So we'll see how far we get with the video today. Well, all right, so the drill is set to full drill speed rather than hammer action, because I don't really need to be hammering it very much. These are great, these, uh, these discs, because they take all the, the rust and the paint off, but they don't do any damage to the surface. They're very non-destructive. Let's get back as far as metal there. Shiny steel. Yeah, it's quite heavily pitted, that, so we'll, we'll treat it, and then we'll skim it with a little bit of filler. Now I know I'm going to get comments for not using rust killer first of all on the metal but I'm going to go straight in with this MDS rust neutralizing primer because it does the job of both primer and rust killer all at once. So just going to do one blob of it onto the car, the rust is killed, it's ready to paint over pretty much or fill over and you're good to go. It's labour saving and more effective. Okay, I've masked this whole area up and whilst I've been doing it, I've been thinking, why aren't I doing this in the barn? Because it wouldn't be really windy in the barn, but I've got loads of stuff to do here at home and I haven't got time to go over there at the moment. So what I'll do is just get the red undercoat rust neutraliser on there. And then once it's all dried off and I'm ready to go and do the top coat, I'll whiz it over to the barn and put the top coat on over there, which is probably a far better idea. On there, what I've done incidentally is this little trick where you put the tape on and curl it back on itself so you get like a soft edge, a feathered edge, um, where you meet the main paint. I'm hoping not to go, hopefully it won't go that far, but you know, and anywhere where there's a hard edge, we use the hard edge itself. Right, we shall now let that dry and take the paper off, flat it all back nicely, and then we can go take it somewhere warm for the um, top coat. Now to skim over the moon-like surface of those door corners with some P38, no, not the Range Rover, and of course up on the roof of the car just to soften those hard edges of deep factory paint. Now let's get some as thin as possible to save on sanding time, but I always get this bit wrong and it always goes kinda wrong. Oh well. Right, let's give this a bit of a sanding, got a block in there, and what grit am I using here, it's quite heavy, 120, to block this down flat. This is why you don't want to put too much filler on, because the more you put on, the more you've got to take off. Generally you can feel better than you can see any imperfections. <clears throat> But we'll go back in with another can of, another spray of rust neutralising primer so we kill any rust and protect the metal, certainly protect the metal that's now been exposed. Then some high build primer to fill any extra imperfections before we go and put the final primer and the blue coat on. And the passenger side is more how it should look because it's just a nice light skim that's just kind of filled in the dap nasty indents. I didn't think I'd be using the Furious driving masks very much anymore, but you never know, when these things come in handy. Try to put that soft edge on there. Whenever I wear a mask and I'm standing, I always try and blow it, never works for some reason. Right, there we go, it's all been sort of blended to a smoother finish now, all along there. And all along this, I'll give this a second, a second coat of the uh, rust neutralizing primer and then come back to that in the morning. Right, okay, so it's getting dark now and well, you know, it's the evening and I want to get this video out 
tonight or tomorrow morning for Sunday so you can watch this with breakfast perhaps. So we'll call us a day as far as we go here. So we've now got the new rims in the car looking absolutely fantastic. A massive transformation to this Beetle really does suit it. The original rims sometimes just can be the absolute best. Rovers are another case in point where there's not many wheels that can actually improve this generation of Rover. These ones are kind of similar. There are a few ones. Some of the Audi TT and uh, Beetle RS upgrades look really good, but they're hard to come by and very expensive. If this is my own car that I was going to keep for kind of long term, I'd probably look into doing that kind of thing. But as this is going to be, you know, a car that's moving on, I don't want to put too much money into it. So this is the kind of level of expense and achievement I'm hoping to, well, achieve. Meanwhile, the doors are now reprimed with uh, rust killing primer. So once that's all gone off overnight in the morning, so tune in next time, as they say, we can go in with some high build primer, some finer paper, the blue paint and the lacquer, and then we'll have our car hopefully looking super spiffy. Very nice indeed. Well, fingers crossed it will anyway. Hopefully it won't go horrifically wrong and we'll just regret having done this and should have just ignored it and pretended it wasn't there. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think of the car in the comments below. And you'll oh, join me again next time when either we'll be carrying on with this or I might be explaining why that's got no hubcap on it, as people keep on asking about in the, uh, in the comments. And their response every time is, of course, spoilers, sweetie. Find out next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. I'll see you again later. Take care, goodbye.